Hey guys, Brian Holder here, Brian Holder Graphic and Web Design. Got a WYSIWYG Web Builder tutorial for you. And today what I want to talk about is kind of rehashing a tutorial I did uh, last year, uh, or possibly even the year before, regarding the master frame and how important that the master frame is to a web design. Um, so we're going to dive in a little bit on how to set one up, what it is, and why it's important. So I guess to answer the big question, why is it important? Uh, when you're doing web design, it's important that every page of your website has a very similar look and feel. Um, when users are using a website and they go from one page that has a certain background color and a certain layout to another page that has a completely different layout with a different color and a different font size, uh, it can kind of be confusing to them. Uh, a lot of times they're going to bounce because they're thinking that, you know, we're bouncing around between websites and they're not getting the answers that they want to their problems. So it's important to use a master frame because that's going to allow your website to have the exact same header, footer, and uh, other pertinent information well, throughout the whole website. It's going to be consistent. Even simple things like, like a, a shift in the logo, moving the logo from the center of the page to the right-hand side of the page uh, can really throw users off a little bit. So to solve this, we use master frames. And basically what the master frame is, is the header and footer on one page. And then what happens is that the additional pages within the design get inserted into the middle of that header and footer. Okay, so what we have here is a blank project. I have nothing, uh, nothing started yet. You'll see I have my grid lines laid out. And bear with me because I'm, I've switched over to trying to use this um, uh, ribbon. I'm not used to it, so I'm, I'm, I do have some trouble finding things <laughs> uh, occasionally. Um, and what I'm looking for right now is where the grid lines are, and they, I thought they were in the Arrange tab, but I'm not seeing them. Yeah, I apologize. I shouldn't have switched this over <laughs> right before a tutorial. Um, but you'll figure it out, I'm sure. If, 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 I, if I can figure it out, maybe I'll make another tutorial. But... Um, I use these. I have these grid lines set up on a certain, uh, a very certain spacing here. Um, and what I'm going to do is change the width of my website over to um, 1140. Okay. And so you can see how my grid lines adjusted the size. So the first thing we want to do before we do anything is rename index HTML to something different. Uh, I always just name the master frame, master frame, just so that it's easy. And the reason I do this is because of the way that I have my program set up, is that when I add a new text or a new element, any kind of anything from the toolbox here, it automatically puts the page name in front of the text ID, in front of that ID number. Okay, so you'll see it says master frame text one. If I if I left this at index, it would say index text one. And the reason I, I do that is so that way every element has its own unique ID. You know, text one is different from index page to master frame, so we want it to have a different ID. Okay. So the very first thing that we can do, we're going to draw out a layer box. Now I'll come down here to, I must have passed it my advanced. I'm going to drop that up in the top. I'm going to stretch this guy out to be the entire length of the site. Also, I'm going to drop a guide over here at the very end so that um, I have something to clip to. Something to lock on to here. Alrighty, 1140. And we can make this a little bit smaller. Maybe we'll go 30, no, 36. I'm going to make this dark. I'm going to relative horizontal sizing and position. I'm going to make sure the content is centered. And I'm going to give this a dark, uh, actually I'm going to give it a pattern. I like to do the patterns on these sometimes. And I'll go to like 75%. And then we'll just change we use a black and an off gray, dark gray color. Kind of gives it a little texture. Now I'm going to copy this guy. That's going to be like our top bar navigation area. And for this, we are going to just do a solid, well, you know, let's go to gradient. And it's going to go from white to kind of a, I'll choose this Gainsborough. It's the third up from the bottom. And that we can make 
150 pixels. And let's say we wanted to have the menu bar on the bottom underneath the header. So just drop this in here. Menu bar should be maybe about 60 pixels. Color, um, I don't know, let's give it a red. I have a deep red color. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, so now when we go and preview this guy, you'll see we just have a nice little header. It stretches all the way across the screen. It's responsive, so as the screen size changes, so does that header. Now we're ready. And so we can go ahead and drop in a real quick logo. Um, let's see what we got. I'll just pick a random. Random logo here. Okay, no outline. We'll make this our fire red color. that I have to resize this every time. That's not right. All right, so nothing special. It's actually pretty ugly. I'm gonna remove this. Okay. Okay. And now what we're gonna do is draw in a footer area. And we're going to go down, we'll give it a few hundred pixels between the header and the footer here. And for that, this is going to be more of a styling object, so we'll just maybe five pixels. Copy and paste that, bring that in, stretch this guy out, maybe, maybe it's a simple footer. Maybe we do a real simple one, 46 pixels tall, and this will make it darker. Okay, and that gives us a nice spot to throw in a real quick copyright. Uh, in case you're wondering what the copyright symbol is, the easy way to put it in, it's Alt-0169. Hold down the Alt key, press 0169, and you'll get the copyright symbol. Alright, give it a white. Alrighty, so that's in there. And now the key is... In order to make the, what we're going to do is when we build our pages, the content's going to appear in this area right here, between the header and the footer. And so what we're going to use is in the advanced section of the toolbox, there's a little tool called Content Placeholder. That's what we're going to dump right in here. So we're going to center that up a little bit, give it a little bit of space below the header, stretch it out to the width of our website, and that's it. We're good to go on that. So now what we're going to do is, I'm just going to quickly clone this page, because all of this content's going away anyways. I'm going to rename page one to index. And the key is, we're going to go into the page properties. And under the miscellaneous tab, the very first option up here at the top, master frame. We're going to select the master frame. Hit OK. And voila, just like that, whenever we preview this index page, whatever we put on this page right here will be inserted into this box. OK. So let's do a quick little sample here. And let's throw in, uh, I'm just going to use a shape. And the shape is going to represent some kind of a carousel or slideshow or a big banner at the top, whatever it may be. Okay, and let's say that we have a button associated with that. And 
Okay. And then we have a couple of little content boxes down here at the bottom. So what I'll do is paste these guys in here. And I think I'm going to go a little bit bigger than you know, not three. That's pretty good. So now we will align these guys up the same. And we're going to distribute the widths horizontally. Oop. That way there's even space between each box. And we're just going to, oops, not text art. We're going to throw in just some text down at the bottom. That way we know we have some good scrollable content so we can see how this looks. Uh, let's see here. Oop, that's not what I want. I have to remember. I have to figure out how to insert more. Oh, here it is. Alrighty, so we'll just insert some paragraphs. I'm going to pretty this up a little bit. Uh, line height. Ugh. That drives me nuts. Wish I would stay the size that I chose. Okay, so now we have a nice big page here. Looks like a little bit like a home page, right? Sort of, maybe. And now when we hit this preview tab, the magic happens. Oop! Hold that thought. One last thing I forgot to do, page properties, make sure we center this page in the browser window horizontally. Yes. And let me make sure I did that to the master frame as well. Okay. Now the magic happens. Now you can see everything we put on that index page has been inserted in between what we have as a header and what we put as a footer. And you can put all kinds of things on the master frame. You know, if you decided that, for instance, you wanted to have, you know, a list of your partners down here, some logos or companies that you're affiliated with, you know, you can list them in there. Um, you can list in there, you know, we probably accept PayPal. You can have uh, just about anything in there that you want. Uh, and likewise with the header, you know, you'll have your menu up here. You can put a little call to action, sign up for our email list, something like that up here. You got this tarp bar, which is great for social media icons and maybe a quick call to action or a phone number, something like that. And all the content that we created on this page is inserted directly into this little box. There are several different options for this box. Um, I usually just leave it as is, the way it comes, which is overflow means that if the content that's being injected into that box is larger than that box, what should happen? You can, let's say if we hit scroll, right? You'll see when we go to preview this page, all the content stays inside this little box, and I got scroll bars here. That's obviously not the way to go, right? Looks like crap. So, you have an option for hidden, which means that any content that falls within that box that is larger than that box cannot be seen. Okay, it only shows what's at the top, which is like this little section right here, top of this. So I usually just leave it as is, which is uh, expand, which automatically expands the height of this and pushes the footer down further. And then uh, alignment left is usually the best to go since the, the site is designed left to right. Uh, you can assign a background to this uh, if you needed to with your website. There's certainly cases where that may, uh, may be applicable, as well as a border around it. And then you can add a box shadow to the bottom around them as well and so that's it that's the basic master frame tutorial it's important to use master frames as much as possible um, again you know just it just simplifies the web design process it simplifies the user experience uh, and it's easier for the users to navigate and find their way around and it, it also builds credibility and trust with the users as well uh, if you have any questions please definitely reach out to me uh, you can Reach out to me on my Facebook page, facebook.com slash bjholderweb. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. It gives me motivation to keep wanting to do these. And uh, I'll catch you on the next tutorial. Thanks.